Hello everyone, I hope everybody is fine. And uh, this is the last video lecture on the conformal map projections. This deals with Lambert conic projection. And uh, that's all within chapter 5, which deals, deals with two dimensional positioning on the uh, conformal mapping plane. In terms of references on Desire to Learn, you have selected pages from uh, Snyder uh, Map Projections of Working Manual. I also add the link to where you can find the full document. Krakivsky Lecture Notes 37, which is available on the uh, GG website. And uh, Richardus and Adler, that's a reference book that you find on uh, UNIB libraries. As a general rule, uh, we can think of the mapping of equatorial places using UTM, mid-latitude places being mapped using the Lambert conical projection, and polar regions being mapped using the stereographic projection. We discussed the use of the stereographic projection for mapping of a particular region, which is New Brunswick and uh, PEI, uh, using the stereographic double projection. Conic projection, as well as the uh, transverse mercator, UTM, was designed by Johann Heinrich Lambert. Uh, now, Lambert was not just a uh, cartographer, geodesist, he was also a, uh, a physicist, mathematician, and astronomer. So, back in 1772, which is basically the same year when he uh, invented the transverse mercator, he came up with the idea of a, a conformal projection using a cone. And uh, this projection was uh, later on used heavily in the US and it is the basis of the state-based map series, which is the mapping of each one of the U.S. states, either using the UTM or the Lambert Conformal Conic. So, uh, basically, uh, the states that have uh, east-west extension use conic projection, and the uh, states that are more into the north-south extent, they use the, uh, the cylindric, the UTM. The Lambert conform pro conic projection, it uh, makes use of two standard parallels, either in the large uh, scale or small scales, and of course that this is something that uh, is ideal, is applied uh, for reducing the uh, scale distortion. We have this figure and uh, that shows the, the basic uh, looks of the uh, conic projection. The pole is represented as a point from where the uh, meridians are represented as straight lines, radial to the pole, and the parallels are circles uh, concentric uh, to the pole. This figure now shows the effect of the two standard parallels. We have here the continental US, and we can see clearly the standard parallels. They obviously have no distortion, so 0% distortion, distortion k equals to 1. We have this region of a decrease of scale between the standard parallels and outside the standard parallels, we have an increase in scale. And you can see that the scale increases much faster outside uh, of the standard parallels. Conic projections can be generally built using polar coordinates, uh, which must be calculated after locations chosen, uh, usually off the final map. That's going to be basically the pole, and uh, we're going to have the uh, circular arcs, which represent the parallels of latitude, and the meridians of longitude will be represented as straight lines radiating from the center. And they're going to be spaced from each other at an angle that is equal to the product of the cone constant times the difference in longitude. Let us look at the main characteristics of the Lambert conformal conic projection. It is, of course, conic, it's conformal, the parallels are unequally spaced arcs of concentric circles, more closely spaced near the center of the map, the meridians are equally spaced, the radii of the same circles, thereby cutting parallels at right angles, which is very important. The scale is true along two standard parallels, normally, or along just one. Two parallels, scale reduction between them, scale amplification outside them. The pole is in the same hemisphere as the standard parallels. The other pole has no representation. It is used for maps of countries and regions with predominant east-west expanse. This figure shows the general geometry of a conic projection 
and the definition of a grid coordinate system. The projection center is the pole. Meridians are straight lines radial to the pole, and parallels are curved lines concentric to the pole. We want to determine the coordinates of point P. We can do that by using polar coordinates from the pole, angle theta, and distance rho. Angle theta is the product of the longitude with the cone constant. The grid coordinates x and y can be determined if we define an origin of the Cartesian coordinate system with coordinates x sub 0 and y sub 0, defining a system of false coordinates. The distance between the origin of the Cartesian coordinate system and the pole is represented by rho sub 0. The grid coordinates can then be determined as a function of the angle theta, rho, rho sub 0, and the angular values of latitude and longitude. In the next slides, I present the equations, uh, the mapping equations for the sphere and for the ellipsoid. The basic equations, they look the same. The component x equals to the product of rho times the sine of theta, and the component y equals to rho sub zero minus the product of rho cosine theta. Uh, the question now is the computation of the other elements, and they are all given in there. To call the attention, the uh, element n, the constant n, is the so-called constant of the cone. Now we have the inverse equations. In the next slide, we have the equations for the ellipsoid, and we have to realize that uh, we have also the subscripts 1 and 2. They correspond to uh, the two standard parallels. The scale factor can be computed for the sphere and also for the ellipsoid, and the median convergence is the angle gamma, which is basically the same as the angle theta. To finalize, let's look at linear distortions as represented by the Tissot indicatrix. We can clearly see here the two standard parallels. One, it's a little bit to the north of, uh, of New Brunswick in uh, Labrador. The other one is uh, close to the equator. And uh, we have then a region of decreasing scale uh, where the circles are sp slightly smaller. And we can see that as we move outside of the uh, standard parallels, the uh, distortion, linear distortion increases quite dramatically. So that's it. The next video classes, uh, video lectures will be on the on system of heights. So I'll talk to you later. Bye.